Hello, my name is Mariam Gugushvili and next to me is Ekaterina Chemia. Today we are going about uh, going to talk about 14 nanometer broadwall microarchitecture and Eka will start with what is it and where it is used. Intel's first 14 nanometer chip is Broadwell Y, with the Y standing for the lowest power version of the chip and marketed under the name Core M. Intel's 14 nanometer chip was first introduced in 2015 and includes the second generation of what the company calls its three gauge transistors, which other people are calling FinFETs. Uh, the practical result of these chips is that they enable fitness tablets and uh, laptops that are less than nine millimeter thick bringing the core design to a uh, fitness system. According to the Intel's vice president of platform engineering, Intel has doubled the CPU core performance between 2010 and 2014, increased the graphic performance by seven times, and reduced the power uh, requirements by four times, enabling systems with half the battery size and double the battery life. Overall, Intel said that the size of SRAM memory cell on CPU decreased by 54% uh, in size, and for the logic area of the chip, they said the scaling was con uh, continuing to imp improve at 0.53x uh, per generation. As a result, Intel has true 14 nan nanometer. Uh, it is delivering both denser and faster than what other founders are calling 14 nanometer or 16 nanometers. For Broadway Y, a combination of process technology and design has uh, allowed uh, for twice as much power saving as traditional scaling would deliver. Now I would like to move on uh, the usage of uh, Broadwell. In terms of uh, application, 14 nanometer chips are mainly used in high-end customer electronics. AI chips, application processors, and automotive electronics, supporting a wide range of products from mobile devices to servers. 14 nanometer transistors improve performance and reduce leak power, uh, leakage power. Intel 14 nanometer technology is used to manufacture a uh, wide range of high performance to a low power products, including servers, personal computing devices, and products for internet of things. Now, Maria will, uh, will deeply explain how it works. Yes, I will explain how it works. Uh, and this part uh, will include uh, the speeds of transfers, clocks, and operations. Uh, 14 nanometer process technology is designed to optimize power efficiency. Capacitance scales by 0 0.65 times and area scales by 0 0.51 times. A new process flavor with two times lower leakage reduction was created for funless optimization for Intel Core M uh, processors. Minimum operating voltage has been the key focus right from the inspection as voltage is the single best knob to scale the power efficiency. Broadwell delivers more than a 10% minimum voltage improvement using a combination of design, process, architectural enhancements. Portage nanometer technology delivers lower variation, new strategy on optimal ground reading of devices for lower minimum voltage and capacitance in different portions of the die, moving the mid-level cache to a standard a secondary supply, thus enabling core to get a lower voltage without being limited by cache performance variation and uh, with the wise layout geometry added error checking and corrections to graphics fully integrated voltage uh, regulator fibr design was significantly mod uh, modified and enhanced uh, to bring additional value uh, for uh, the lower part Intel core m processor 3D inductors technology was introduced to enable smaller and thinner package where air core inductors in the package replaced with a standalone inductor module which utilizes the space below the package cavity that would allow for an increased volume for the air core to extend in the z-axis down into the motherboard as shown on the picture. Uh, also, as shown on the picture, LVR outputs uh, are shorted to corresponding FIVR rail. Uh, FIVR module uh, control module FCM boot LVR FSM takes care of handoff between FIVR and LVR to power the rail. Advanced vector uh, extensions AVX 
Our viruses causes a very fast current drought that the traditional linear, linear VR control loop could not keep up with in Haswell, a 22 nanometer silicon. Broadwell added a fast enhanced nonlinear control loop NLC and FIVR to reduce to FIVR to reduce troop as shown on the picture. Furthermore, Broadwell implemented dynamic adjustments of the FIVR input supply based on the load line resulting in up to 10% power benefit for workloads in one or two voltage range. So uh, let's continue. Uh, specific, specifically about the design and architecture. Uh, Broadwell 40 nanometer uses Moore's law that has uh, made uh, has made the uh, massive advances in microelectronics over the past 14 years possible. Its basic formulation says that the number of transistors can uh, one can pick uh, can pack into a given area of a chip will roughly double every couple of years. Intel has good mountains to keep Moore's law on track, and it has reaped huge benefits benefits for doing so. Intel's Trigate transistors have grown closer together at the 14th nanometer node. Vintage has been reduced from a 60 to 42 nanometer, while the fields themselves has grown taller and thinner. Let's continue more about the architecture. Broadwell introduces a new mechanism called duty cycling control, DCC, that has a different aim. Broadwell's integrated graphics component takes off, uh, takes off roughly, roughly a third of its die area, perhaps a little more, and DCC targets those graphic units. Working together, the SOC hardware and Intel graphics uh, driver can shut the IGP's execution units of entirely doing some uh, clock cycles, eliminating evil, evil even a lower uh, power. DCC kicks in when those execution units would otherwise be operating under inefficient conditions at a low clock frequency where further voltage reductions are not practical. With the light graphics workload that only required half of the IGP's horsepower, DCC might ensure that the IGP, IGP spends half its cycles turned off and the other half doing its work. Broadwell uh, integrated GPU has a very low uh, latency for switching on and off, which makes this mechanism practical. In fact, Broadwell's IGP, uh, IGP has a range of DCC operating points ranging as low as 12.5% of a regular clock speed. At the lowest level, the graphics EUs uh, are active for only one out of every eight clock cycles. There is power down for the rest, even though the IGP uh, made a bit drawing and animation on screen. So that's another way the Broadwell team managed to shoehorn, uh, shoehorn this chip into a much smaller power envelope. Uh, one can imagine that this technique could uh, see extensive use in future as graphics hardware takes up an ever larger portion of the die area. Uh, what's more, since the SOC can share power across its die, some of the power reductions realized on the graphics side of the house with a DCC can be used to enable Broadwell's CPU cores to run at higher frequencies as well. So DCC offers an effective increase in dynamic operating range on both ends of the spectrum. Uh, well, uh, Intel's uh, TikTok process typically confines major CPU architecture changes to the second chip produced uh, on a new process technology, but the rigid segmentation uh, seems to be leaking a bit over time as Intel pursues its uh, goal for credibility. Brutal CPU cores have received a number of tweaks over has walls uh, with a net efficiency of increasing instruction uh, throughput a clock by about 5%, generally speaking. In keeping with Broadwell's mobile focus, Intel's architects set a high standard for any added features in this revision of the architecture. A new feature must contribute 2% more performance for every 1% added power use. In the past, any gain better than one uh, over one might have been acceptable, but not this time. The extended transistor budget at 40 nanometer has allowed for larger structures in many cases, a bigger out of order scheduler, a 50% larger uh, TLB for the L2 cache, and a new dedicated L2 TLB for one gigabyte pages. Also, a second unit can now handle TLB page misses in parallel with the primary one. 
With all of the TLB enhancements, it should be a no surprise that virtualization round trips are supposedly quicker. Broadwell has fewer B for uh, execution units too. The floating point uh, multiplier's latency has dropped from five to three cycles, and certain crypto uh, cryptography-specific instructions now execute more quickly as well. The changes to Broadwell's graphics and media architecture are arguably uh, even more sweeping. Now I will continue about Broadwell's uh, versus Hustle. For comparison, we use two chips, one from Broadwell and another from Hustle. The chips are very close. The Hustle-based E5250 uses a Intel Core i5-4300 4310U, uh, a dual core chip with hyper threading and the rated clock speed from 2 GHz to 3 GHz. Uh, the Broadwell based uh, E5250 uh, has a core i5 uh, 5200U that's also a dual core with hyper threading and ranges from 2.2 gigahertz to 2.7 gigahertz. While the Bradwell's base clock speed is a little higher, its top speed is a bit lower. For graphics, the Broadwell has an Intel HD 5500, uh, uh, while the Harswell has Intel HD 4400 graphics. First up is the Pure CPU Bench, uh, Sign Bench R15, which measures the chip performance uh, rendering 3D. The performance for the most part is very close. Surprise, the Harvest chip actually wins because the single threaded mode gives the Harswell chip a small advantage due to the, its higher clock speed when on turbo boost mode. Uh, the Broadwell tops uh, out at 2.7 GHz, while the uh, 3.0 GHz of the Harswell chip's top speed. Uh, that gives the Harswell chip about 10% clock speed advantage. Despite the roughly 10% uh, clock speed difference between the two, the actual performance gap is Signbench R15 is closer to 5%. What happens when you run Signbench R15 in multi-threaded mode? Uh, though there is a, where it measures the overall performance of the cores in CPU, uh, where um, we see uh, Broadwich uh, Broad will um, come back to each out of Harswell chip. This is because while the Broadwell chip is slower in overall clock speed when only one core is working, it runs a little cooler. Uh, that's uh, uh, thanks to uh, for a nanometer process. Uh, the Harswell has an advantage in the beginning as it heats up, it starts to go back on frequency, so it's only about uh, 100 megahertz faster by the end of the test. Combined with the better efficiency of Broadwell, it's just enough to make the fifth generation chip really faster here. Looking for a heavier duty task, standard encoding tests where we take a 30 gigabyte 1080p MKV file and use handbrake to transcope using the Android for tablet profile. On dual core machine, it takes in express of two hours to compete. This test complete. This test tells us two really useful data points. The first is how well a per particular CPU performs in this heavily multi-threaded test. Short of an 18-core CPU with 180p resolutions files, it's a max, um, it, uh, it will uh, max out all cores. The second data point uh, you get from this test is how much the design of a laptop suffers from the uh, thermal thr uh, throttling. Uh, model CPUs are designed to slow down when they get too hot, or if the CPU ma uh, maker determines it's heating up the entire laptop too much. Broadwell cuts both ways. Broadwell is better than Harswell by 5% to 10% or so on a given task when the CPU models are exactly the same. Battery life is better by 10% or so. Graphic performance is much improved, but it is uh, uh, still just the integrated graphics suited for office, drainage, or low ambition gaming. Uh, yes, that was all about the 14th nanometer broadwell microarchitecture, and thank you for the attention.